guys welcome back to my channel today i'm gonna do a double month wrap up so this will include july and august there wasn't many in july so that's why i didn't do a wrap up there was i think three books in total um and then this month i've actually been able to get some reading done so i think i've got a total of 14 books i finished maybe 13 and then three books i dnf so um, I'll probably start with the books I DNF'd. The last couple months I have obviously had my uni work as I've mentioned and now that I've finished I can fully put some more time into more reading. I've actually already started lots of book buying so if you probably look on my shelves you can see quite a few of the books I'm getting. I've got a few that are coming through in the mail today and tomorrow so there will be a massive book haul up on my channel soon. Just literally any five star read I've seen on TikTok or booktube. Mostly what all the booktubers are recommending and I'm trying to get into like my fall stage because I don't really get fall in Australia. There's no really like seasonal changes, which is kind of nice. While I've been in the UK, I get to see all the leaves drop. Lots of fantasy I'm feeling. I'm having a fantasy moment at the moment. I've got lots of fantasy books on order. Well, let's get into my DNFs first. So I did actually start Unravel Me not too many weeks ago, I think maybe a couple weeks ago uh, when it first came out. I Look, I'm just gonna put it out there. It, one of the main tropes in this book is Insta Love. So I DNF'd it at about 20%. If you don't love this trope, do not read it. <laughs> it's so bad. I thought I could handle it. I was like, oh, I really like Beck and Mac's writing usually. I was like, I'm just going to give it a go to see if I like it. Mm. Like they were in love, in love within the first few chapters. And that's, that's boring. <laughs> it was too boring. I couldn't do it. So yeah, I just gave up on that book. If you love it, definitely recommend. If you hate that trope like me, don't start it. It's just, there's, it's, there's no point. Don't put yourself through it. <laughs> then I read Court Stealing by C.E. Ricky, which is part of her uh, Leighton U University series, where there's lots of um, MM romances based in college. I've read the first one and I loved that. Not obsessed, but I liked it. Um, and then I was like, I'm just going to give this one a go again. Though I've had a lot of hit and miss books from her. This was definitely a miss, and I ended up doing nothing at about 65%. There was just so many things I didn't like. Um, there was like an underlying misogyny, like a lot of comments, and I was like, um, I know this is an MM romance, but you know, you can still not bring that aspect into it. There was digs at Swifty, there was unnecessary comments towards women. Why? And then there was the thing about consent, which I've noticed is a, a common occurrence within a few of her books. Anyway, I don't really want to get into that too much because if you want to go read about what happened there, um, just go read the Goodreads reviews because I had a good laugh at them. They are my favourite place to go after finishing a book. So if you want to go there, definitely go read there um, and make up your own mind about whether if you want to start it or not because a lot of the people were saying exactly what I was thinking and sometimes I couldn't even articulate why I was feeling so off about the book and then I went to the Goodreads comments um, and sorry, the Goodreads reviews and the comments and I was like, yes, this is why. At the start of July was my other DNF, Tempting Little Thief by Brandy Mel- um, <clears throat> sorry, Tempting Little Thief by Brandy- wait, <laughs> Tempting Little Thief by Megan Brandy, oh my god. Um, <laughs> so she is one of my all-time favourite authors, Say You Swear, loved it. I was super excited to start this book, I got it as an arc and I just couldn't finish it. It took me four days to read 20% of the first book, it was just so much information but I just couldn't connect with the characters, like what they were doing. They were mafia, family, royalties, or like they were just like in the mafia, but they were in school and they were acting like they were in the mafia. And I just ended up doing nothing. It just wasn't for me. I know a lot of people loved it. Um, I just don't know if I'm in my mafia era anymore. Mafia is really hit and miss. Like I can either love a book, but I can never read them back to back. I can only read them like once or twice. So I just don't think this was the mafia book for me. <laughs> I'm not sure where I got up to. My neighbour ended up starting to clean their car out the front. There was so much noise I had to stop, so that's all right. <laughs> I'll try to figure it out. But I think I got up to my DNFs. Next I read was One Touch by Lena Hendricks. So this was Beckett and Kate's story. Beckett is her older brother's best friend. Kate's ending up needing some help to repair her auntie's house, who I believe had just recently passed. Um, and lo and behold, Beckett's the only builder in town and he owns this massive building company. He is rich his family's rich they're wealthy but i literally ate this book up like i get four stars it was so good their banter was just so juicy and i think as well had a quite a bit of spice to it as well but it just added that extra layer of tension like it was just building up so well the forbidden aspect of having 
like the brother's best friend and then they have like that fourth proximity where they're forced to be around each other because of the renovations like he's the only builder in town and <laughs> obviously it's small town vibes so you could turn link him as a builder and the neighbors keep the neighbors keep doing gardening out the front now. I don't know what's going on. It went from cooking the car to gardening, but anyway. What I remember was talking about one touch, but um basically I really, really enjoyed that. It was just really captivating. I was in like indulged in it from start to finish. And I've never read any of her books before, so it's definitely made me want to go read some more of hers. But um if you're looking for something that's like a romance book, but it's just got that extra bit of depth to it without it being too emotional. Like you just want to go in sort of lighthearted, but it's also got something to it that you're not actually gonna bawl your eyes over it. Definitely read this one. Um, I highly recommend it. The Pup Secret. Um, this one was so fucking spicy. All I can remember when I think about this is spice scenes, and I feel like I may have rated it a little bit too high. I would definitely say it's a three point seven five in my eyes. I, I think I gave it a four, but I don't think I should have given it that four stars because it was just a lot of it was just smart. This one was a teammate's sister you've got the secret texting trope which i do love i love a good texting or notes i don't know i just think that they're so cute sometimes i would say if you're looking for like a spicy hockey book because i believe this is hockey right yeah the puck secret oh my god puck but yeah definitely hockey <laughs> so if you're looking for like another spicy um hockey book definitely read this one the reason that i found this one was actually i don't know how but i saw a video on tiktok and it was like oh sharing scene um so there's a sharing his caring scene in here with his best friend um at a party in a basement so yeah that was what that's how i found the book and i read it it was worth reading it but yeah i wouldn't <laughs> i probably wouldn't reread it <laughs> next i read under the stars by laura pavlov this is the second book in her cotton tree series i think i think that's what's called um that this was maddox and george story so maddox is actually a billionaire which you don't really get billionaire vibes from him in this book i'm not gonna lie you do get rich rich but not billionaire because he this is where it didn't make sense to me and i only gave it four stars because it would have been a higher rating <laughs> if it wasn't for this because he is a billionaire but he like moves his company to a small town and like obviously like his family and shit are from a small town but i'm like okay why have you chosen to be in this small town like You've moved everyone and all the office and like you're trying to hire people from the small town to run this billion dollar company like oh anyway it makes sense anyway but you do get workplace romance with this grumpy sunshine he is just super grumpy maddox honestly overall i think this is like a good summer's read like a good small town cozy like it's just a cozy read like, there's not really like much else to it um it was super easy really fast paced um you get like the reformer playboy vibes i would give this four stars i would recommend it definitely this series i really liked them all um i probably wouldn't recommend reading them all like one after another i definitely say they're more like a palette cleanser type book yeah i did enjoy it but then i read a arc from sarah kate which was the anti-hero i really really enjoyed this her name was sage and she's like a bdsm kink club owner which obviously sarah kate's the queen of kink clubs she is the one you go to and then you've got Adam. Adam's the son of a priest, so you're sort of combining like her two genres of spicy books, which I love. Um, and this is the, uh, the the first book to her new series, so I believe it's going to follow all of the brothers which you meet in this book. And I'm super excited because I've met a few of them we've already met. Um, I actually like them more than Adam, and I feel like their stories are going to be a lot more like just so much more to unpack because there is like his. Actually, no, I'm not going to tell you because. <laughs> they will ruin the plot so basically this is like a revenge plot against adam's dad they end up fake dating in order to get like his reputation torn down by dating this girl who's so different and she has tattoos and you know she owns this club and she's just so crazy and different <laughs> and that's their revenge um and it's also to help her get revenge on her ex-boyfriend who had wronged her as well i really did enjoy it because it did have a religion aspect I, I don't really know too much about religion i'm not religious myself so i don't know if it was done in the right way but from everything i've read online it seems like she's done a good job overall it was just like it was just easy to read again like i really like sarah kate's writing all of her books are just so easy so spicy and you get what you're getting when you get the Sarah, like you know what you're going into as soon as you've read one of her books, like that's what you're going to get, but just different templates and I love it. She's just, she's just one of those authors that I'll definitely like repeat by, I'll always go and read her books. Um, I ended up giving it 4.5 stars, I actually really enjoyed this. Done and Dusted by Lila Sage, this was my first book at first and I'm pretty sure this actually is her debut and this is going to be a new series and I fucking love this book. Again, another sibling's best friend. 
obviously Ling's best friend. I it was so good. Like small town vibes. She is the queen rodeo girl. She rides horses. She's a cowgirl. <laughs> How many times can I say that? She is a cowgirl and she's just come back um to her small town which she's been away from for a while. So many good moments in this book. I think if you like Elsie Silva and you're trying to look for a book that's like in between her books and releases this is definitely one of them like I got those same vibes I wouldn't say like I've so far found a five star from her this is definitely a four star read for me um but it was just really really good like it just had that small town vibe it had the cowgirl cowboy just the spice was incredible I have not read anything like that in a while like um the build up to it as well just it worked just so well and it was so hilariously funny like she is such a good writer like I was laughing and giggling to myself so much I yeah I definitely found a new author that I want to keep buying her books from because it was just I'm like this is your debut like it's insane it was really good wait I just checked I actually did give it 4.5 stars so it wasn't a four star 4.5 and I read Garen Park which I ended up finishing um this one was an MM romance I don't know this one just didn't work for me like the pu push and pull between them like it was meant to be like this angsty book where they never really become lovers but like that was the part that I was sort of looking forward to because like you could tell they cared for each other but then they would still like get into physical fights and like it was just really weird it was very juvenile um yeah i did not like this um i wouldn't recommend i gave it two stars i said it was repetitive and childish the other thistle by samantha young this is my first samantha young book um i had really high hopes because a lot of people had told me online that this was like their five star read of the month they were loving it um i didn't have a five star vibe from it the plot was really engaging and i thought everything about it was nice and I didn't get the plot twist either, even though I should have seen it coming, but there was a twist, but it was like another twist. So yeah, anyway, I liked it, but I just didn't love it. So yeah, I gave it 3.75 stars, um, but I would definitely recommend it because a lot of my mutuals have said that they loved it a lot. Um, maybe it could have just been me at the time. So yeah, I would still recommend reading it because I don't know, the body card trope always gets me. Like it's one of my, it's like always one of the ones I always fall in love with anyway. So you can't go wrong with single mom bodyguard. This is where my month sort of had like, um, like a bit of a turn i don't know what happened but i got so many bangers from here so many bangers so next i read out in a limb by hannah von young i think that's how you pronounce her name anyway she is a new author to me and i'm fucking obsessed with her this was the funniest most wholesome most amazing book i have read in such a fucking long time five stars incredible highly recommend it out in a limb you need to read it you need to read it so so good i'm obsessed win and vote meet at a house party and she win wins best friend's partner who which they've all been friends since school his work colleague Bo was how he was invited to their party and that's how they met they end up having a one night stand and this is the pregnancy trope but i do want to say i am not a pregnancy trope girly i've never it's never enticed me and even when there is a pregnancy trope towards the end of the book so i'm always like oh like skip through but this book has changed my mind about the pregnancy trope i don't there's something in her writing that it is hilarious i was literally cackling to myself their banter was incredible their chemistry was incredible the plot was incredible the writing was incredible everything about it i couldn't i can't think of a single thing i would like to change and that's really difficult to say about a romance book this is a little bit more picky towards romance books but this was just incredible and it's now made me want to change my mind about the pregnancy trope which is just insane for me to say i definitely will be checking out some more of her books because wow wow and I need to order the book. I need to order her book, the physical book. I need it on my shelf. I need it like a trophy. And then I read A Love Letter to Whiskey. A Love Letter to Whiskey was the most messiest, most toxic book I'd ever read in my life, but I had devoured it. Devoured it. Jamie and B met in high school, but then he ended up dating her best friend and they dated for quite a few years. I would definitely say check out Trigger Wings because there are a lot of trips in here that people would hate and despise and that would turn the whole book off for them. So definitely check that because this has those tropes there's no way to describe it other than it's like the most angsty messiest book you'll ever read in your life it, it was right person wrong time always and i'm talking across like maybe like a decade and a half of like their lives you do get to see both sides if you buy the edition that i'm showing up on the screen but yeah otherwise it's single pov for the entire first book and then the second half of the book is jamie's pov and 
it roughly goes through almost every scene that they had in the first book but like from his perspective but then also going into like different parts of like after what happened after that scene or what was happening prior to him arriving to where they were meeting up and like it was showing different things which I really liked because the first time you're reading it you're like why was why was Jane doing that the first time I was reading it in her POV I definitely was getting so frustrated with the things he was doing and saying but then reading his POV definitely gave me a lot more perspective as to what he was going through and like how he was perceiving the way she was doing things and I'm like oh it was just so much miscommunication like the biggest miscommunication across their whole friendship and their love life so um yeah this was actually another five star reading for me I really liked it but it will not be for everyone then I read Before Us I don't know why I was in my angsty books but I was um this one fucking destroyed me I was bawling my eyes out so much. For Us is Emerson and Zach's story. However, the way they meet is definitely unconventional. She is actually hired as the maid to help clean his house for him and his wife. And she actually makes really good friends with his wife uh, in the house. So this does have the dead wife trope, um, just because she's actually extremely sick when they meet. Um, she has cancer. I can't remember what cancer it was. We, she ends up giving the, a blessing to her to like date him, but it's not like that simple because they don't even realize that they've got like an attraction for each other. That's all I'm going to say because it's when she mentions it to them that they're both like, what are you talking about? Like, no, that's your, that's your husband. I liked it, but I didn't like also fall in love with the story. It definitely wasn't a five star read for me because I think towards the end it just sort of, I don't know, like they were extending it when it could have been I think a little bit shorter. Overall though, I did cry so so much. It was very very emotional, very taxing on the soul. Still to give it a, um, a 4.5 star rating, I did really like it but it wasn't like my absolute favourite. Then I wanted to read another angsty book and I started Sweet Dandelion and the way I thought this book was going did not go the way I wanted it to. It ended up being something that I was just not happy with. I ended up giving it a 3 star. I was like, I don't know why. I just... I don't get her choices in life. I'm like, why has this young girl done this? Like, she could, it, it does have a love triangle in it, so definitely just be aware of it. But I'm just like, why? You had someone so good and you chose the wrong person. And I just feel like it was just wrong on so many levels. <sighs> anyway, I'm not even going to go into this because I wouldn't recommend it. It was a lot of pain for no reason and it made me very upset. A Nordic King, which is a story about an Australian girl who is a au pair, au pair, it's like a nanny, and a nanny, she's then taken to the Nordic King, which is in the Netherlands, and he needed a nanny for his children, um, the mother has just recently passed, again, that same trope, but she never met her. She ends up having to get all this, like, royal training, he's, like, not happy with her, it's grumpy sunshine, there is an age gap, but it is technically a suitable age gap, like, I think she was in her early 20s and she's from Australia so I was sort of excited to read this because I was like oh I'm gonna relate to this female main character a lot but the way she was talking like she is saying all the generic Australian things and I'm like you're not Australian I was just getting the ick and I was getting very weird about it and then it just really took my mind out of the story so I think that was what my issue was and I ended up just not loving it as much as I wanted to plus their relationship like he was just so rude and then there wasn't really like a a relationship built in such like a in a way that made me be like oh like they're meant to be I don't know I just didn't get that chemistry from them again that was a three out of five star for me just it wasn't it final book I read was The Good Girl by Nikki Sloan this was an arc I received I'm just filming a video for YouTube about this one now so I'm not going to give too much away so far I've given it a four out of five star rating it was so good it was the older brother sibling trope again but I think this was my favorite book out of the entire series which it is I think the last book now they had the sneaking around trope he had the brother who kept forbidding them to be together they tried to stay away for many years but then end up seeing each other later on and it just sort of just happens and and I think what was my favorite part is the redemption arc because a redemption arc just gets me every time so he was from the first book which was is the son from the first book which was the doctor and the doctor was a ex-boyfriend's dad trope so he was I just hated him in the first book you get to see like their growth development and you also get to see all of the other characters in the neighborhood come back together it was a it was a good finishing to the series yeah so that was all the books I have read through July and August there were quite a few um but yeah now I'm sort of back into my filming and back into regular posting so you'll definitely be seeing some more videos from me 
and yeah I had such a good month I'm so happy but I'll um see you guys in my next video which will probably either be a haul or all my September TBR um thank you for watching and I'll love you and leave you